my friend, thank you for watching. I wanted to make this video because we all have at least one coworker, boss, or client that we dislike. I'm glad that came out kind because in my head, it was rated R. I have to tell you a very quick story. The last job I had was six years ago. After the job, I opened up my own social media business, which I did for five years until I decided that my passion really is to empower others. So I started doing this. Anyhow, six years ago, I worked in the healthcare industry and my job was to audit and train several customer service centers throughout the US. The job was, you know, interesting and challenging in many ways, but my heart really wasn't in it. And frankly, I only did it because I needed the money. On top of that, I highly disliked many of the people I worked with. The environment was beyond toxic. There was so much backstepping and gossiping. I had grown to hate going to work. In fact, and my husband can tell you, there were days when I was crying in the morning because I really dreaded going to work. I wanted to share this story with you just so you know that I really understand what it's like to work in a difficult place with difficult people. So today, I have a few ideas that I think will help. You can use these tips to successfully resolve conflicts, communicate more effectively, and persuade your way into getting the outcomes that you want, or as close to that as possible. Please keep watching and subscribe for weekly new content. So difficult people come in every shape and size imaginable and no workplace is without them. Sadly, they are unavoidable and my advice to you is to tackle difficult people as you would tackle a business goal. So tip number one is to properly spot the problem person. Somebody isn't just annoying to you, that person is annoying you because X, Y, Z. Is this person a gossiper, overly negative, brown nosing too much? We can only fix a problem if we know exactly what that problem is, so we can search for the best and the most suited solution. Once you know the problem, the next step I personally like to take is to anticipate when and where you're most exposed to that person. I started paying attention to the people at my old job and noticed who the problem people were and why. And once I did that, I started writing down, just like in my phone, when and where they were engaging with me. The main gossiper, for example, at that place will always come to my desk every other day, like clockwork, at 10 a.m. because that is when she was going on her first break. I want none of that bullshit gossip, so once I picked up on that, I made sure my day was mapped out in such a way to where I wasn't available to her at 10 I'd either be in the bathroom, at the printer, getting a glass of water, working at my computer with headphones on as to indicate I'm busy, etc. Think ahead of where the problem is likely to happen and see how you can avoid it or at least be less in its presence if that makes sense. Doing this in time will absolutely have an impactful result. Now, the reality is that we can't change people, but we can change the way we feel when something happens and how we react to it. Not liking someone is not not a legitimate enough reason to approach that person. You need to ask yourself why that person brings out certain feelings in you. Do you have a tendency to take things personally? That's one of my struggles. Is it the competition element or maybe do you feel inferior or threatened? You need to ask yourself why that person brings out those feelings in you and depending on the answer, before addressing any people or letting any issues fester up in our minds, we have to address those feelings that get stirred up within us. There's probably a video already in one of my playlists that can help with whatever those reasons may be, but if you don't find one to help, maybe you can leave me a comment and let me know what topic you'd like me to cover next and I will most likely do it. So identify the person and why that individual is a problem to you. Anticipate the problem and start molding your day to avoid it as much as possible. Identify the reasons for the feelings that person brings out of you because a lot of times that alone can fix things. And the next step beyond that is to know when to act. Essentially, we have to pick our battles. You have the power to decide if a situation is serious enough to address. Think twice and fight the battles that are truly worth fighting and winning. A really important thing to keep in mind is that we need to separate the person 
from the problem. In every communication, there are two very separate elements that coexist. The interaction you have with the person you're communicating with and the issue you're discussing. Effective communicators have learned how to separate the two. They learned how to be gentle with the person while being strong on the issue. When you're gentle with the person, that person will be more open to hearing what you have to say. When you're firm on the issue, you show your leadership and your problem-solving qualities. And here are some examples. I really want you a part of this project. Unfortunately, your numbers right now haven't exactly been where they need to be. So this project won't be a good fit, but we will work together on the next one if those numbers approve. Or I want to listen to what you want to say and what is important to you, but I can't hear anything if you're yelling. Either take a moment and let's get back together in a few hours or maybe sit down and let's talk a little bit more quietly. Firm on the issue, soft on the person. This is not a skill for somebody in a leadership position per se. You can assert yourself as a firm problem solver with exceptional people skills in any capacity, really, at work, at home, with your friends, anywhere. If things are at the point where the problem person needs to be addressed, there are a couple more things that I would like for you to keep in mind. Maintain your character, no matter how hard or how tempting it may be. Avoid raising your voice and avoid complaining to others on a regular basis so you don't risk earning the status of whiner because we all know that is not sexy. Talk to the person in a private setting. Don't beat around the bush, go straight to the point. In addition to being soft on the person, use a soft entry as well because nobody likes to go into a room and get hit with criticism off the bat. That's what leads to defensiveness, but get to the subject as fast as possible. So instead of saying, you took all the credit for this and that and yada yada, just say, John, I wanted to talk to you about the project we worked on together. My name didn't appear anywhere to showcase my contribution, not in the documents, not in any of the emails. So it looks as if I didn't play a role in this. This leads into the next idea, which is to state the issue in one or two non-emotional, fact-based sentences. The sentence above didn't really say that my feelings got hurt because I got no credit for the work, even though I was butthurt. The way I said it was non-emotional and it pointed out to specific examples. I also used I statements, which in the past I spoke about how powerful they are. So talk like that and after that initial statement, stop talking and allow the other person to respond. Another piece of advice I have for you is to go into the meeting knowing what you want the resolution to be and to share that with the other person. Other people don't live in our heads and so they won't know what would make us happy. Offer a resolution during your conversation and in the earlier example, the solution could sound something like, I would really appreciate using both of our names on all the documents and in all the emails. Now, if you have a harder time catching yourself in the moment, Moment when you get angry, don't wait. If you know that you're about to have a meeting with somebody who gets under your skin all the time, in the beginning stages of your conversation, you need to take a deep breath and then slowly count to 10 in your head. Before you get the chance to get mad, take another deep breath and count backwards from 10 to one and then repeat that process if you have to. That will distract you for only 10 seconds, but it will take your mind away long enough to kind of plug and then come back calm. I also recommend documenting this person's actions and your interactions with them, dates, times, all the details. If push comes to shove and you need to see a manager or human resources for help, having this information will work on your behalf. I have more tips I'd like to share with you, plus more specific ideas on how to deal with certain types of coworkers like the brown noser, the gossiper, the backstabber, the loud mouth, etc. Those ideas and tips will be sent straight into your inbox this week. If you sign up for my email, I will leave the link for you in the description box. Please give this video a thumbs up if you got inspired in any way and subscribe for weekly videos to help create a beautiful life from the inside out. I love you so much for watching. May good luck and fortune follow you everywhere you go today and every day. I'll see you again very soon in a new video and you might want to watch it because I think you'll like it. Thanks again for being here. Bye!